Let's talk a little bit about a mechanical exam for the neck. So mechanical exam is also known as MDT, repeated movement testing, or the McKenzie method. It's a type of orthopedic assessment and possible subsequent, subsequent treatment that I've added to my orthopedic evaluation because I think it gives me the best insight into diagnosing and effective treatment. So say someone comes in with complaint in the neck. So we're considering that it's the neck because we've ruled out red flags, we've ruled out other options for referred stuff to the neck or non-musculoskeletal causes. Now, there are neck special tests that we learn in orthopedics that may be of value. I don't find them to be very valuable, um, especially in the absence of a mechanical trauma to the neck. Um, so we can use those special tests if we need to, but a mechanical exam is actually quite straightforward for orthopedics, except for we don't learn the repeated movement testing in school. So I had to learn it uh, after school at McKinsey Method courses. So say someone comes in with neck pain, in terms of the mechanical exam, we're gonna look at eight different motions. How are they moving into flexion, extension, retraction, protrusion, right rotation, left rotation, right side bend and left side bend. We might look at nerve tension if the patient has any referred pain into the extremity. Um, it can give you a pretty decent idea if you just do it in sitting, but you can also lie the patient down and do it that way. Um, strength would be another one. If there's any obvious referred stuff into the extremities, you can do strength testing of the shoulder. But for someone who comes just with neck complaints, I'm probably not doing nerve tension and strength testing. I'm probably going straight into the eight movements, assessing if they are full or not, so if they're lacking motion or not, and whether or not they're painful. And I mark down if the pain is during the movement or at the end range of the movement to be more specific. So I might say flexion has, for example, a minimum, minimum loss of range of motion with pain at end range, or protrusion has no loss but pain during motion. So PDM, pain during motion, ERP, end range pain, those give me some idea as to what's going on. For example, uh, soft tissue is typically not going to produce pain during motion, right? If the soft tissue is at fault, it's going to be producing pain when it's on stretch. So at the end of the motion, wherever that motion is. So pain during motion makes me really think of a joint derangement, which is an orthopedic diagnosis put forward by Robin McKenzie, which is what I find to be most problems in orthopedics is a joint is mechanically not moving well and can be treated by finding the direction that moves the joint into its proper positioning, proper place, and starts to function well again without uh, creating local or referred symptoms. So I'll take those eight movements of the neck, mark down the range of motion and the quality of motion, and then I will start with the repeated movement testing. And where a clinician starts there, there are some, there's an algorithm, but patients at home or people who don't know the system could just choose a motion and test because this really is cause and effect. It's not dogmatic, it's do this, and assess what happens. And yes, there are prevalences and there are patterns that we see, but the literature is sound on this, but it's not extensive. So people who are learning it have to do some trial and error and learn from mentors and understand where to go with repeated movement testing based on what the person is saying in the verbal history, what they present with in terms of mechanics, and how they respond to any prior repeated movement history or repeated movement testing that was performed. So say this person's verbal history is that they feel worse with reading, they feel better with lying on their back, um, doing some exercises at the gym hurts and it hurts in the middle of the neck. Um, and then the movement loss, say there's more loss going into right side bend and right rotation and some loss going backwards. I would probably start with going backwards based on prevalence and based on getting worse with reading, which is for almost all people, some protrusion and some flexion. Um, now again, it's gonna be based on several things where you start the repeated movement testing, but say I started with repeated retraction extension. So retraction 
and an extension. I would do five, six, eight, ten, a number that I thought was consistent with the patient's irritability, patient's tolerance, etc. I would do my set of those and I would also note what happens. Is it painful during? Does it create a headache? Does it start sending pain down into the hand? Does it create numbness and tingling? I want to know how the body reacts to that movement and obviously there are red lights to stop if pain is peripheralizing or becoming more intense or creating nausea or things that are just too much. So say we do eight retraction extensions, then I would reassess the mechanics. So for ones that were full and painless, I might not take the time to retest them, but if there was a lack of motion, for example, going into that right quad quadrant, I would retest that. And if the right rotation is getting better, and say extension was getting better in terms of quantity and or quality, it would give me a green light to test another set of the retraction extension repeated movement. Conversely, if I do a repeated movement test, just a small set and something, or overall the picture is getting worse mechanically, that's usually an indication to stop. We also go by symptom response, right? So if the patient has pain with uh, coming into the office, we want to assess what happens to the symptom or pain once we do that set. And we can also use functional baselines, like if, you know, putting a backpack on hurts the patient's neck or lying um, on the right side on the table with a pillow causes neck pain. We could also use those functional baselines. Those are absolutely important and they make um, more sense to a lot of patients to kind of understand that cause and effect. But just looking at the mechanics, we assess cause and effect. Are the mechanics getting worse or better? And if based on that, we do more sets into that same exercise, same direction, same loading strategy, or I would choose something else based on that. For example, if everything got tighter on the right, I might look at something biased to the right, or I might look at flexion. So picking the next step is based on experience, prevalence, total history, etc. Um, and those are the kind of hard decisions that clinicians have to make when they're getting uh, more experience with this repeated movement testing approach. But that experience is valuable. And what makes, I think, clinicians more uh, successful using MDT or repeated movement testing is being able to recognize patterns and understand, understand the concepts faster so that I'm not testing six things before I see improvements in mechanical baselines and symptoms, right? My goal is to find that motion, if there is one motion, as fast as possible. And sometimes it's the first thing we test, the patient goes home with it, does it six to eight times throughout the day, and has a remarkable improvement. And sometimes it takes testing four or five, six different things and finding out which is the absolute best for that individual patient and what I'm talking about is that joint mechanic right what is best for that joint and you know retraction and sitting is different than retraction in supine or re retraction in prone so there's lots of options but the goal of a mechanical exam is to see one by adding this repeated movement testing to the typical orthopedic evaluation are we finding that the person has a mechanical joint derangement and two if they do, we can find which motion is the best one for that patient. We call that motion the patient's directional preference, which makes sense as a term. And outside of those 70 to 80% of patients who have joint arrangements that respond to directional preference, we're getting all the other diagnoses, right? But the reason I use MDT is because I find that I was missing all these patients before who had directional preferences um, who I was stretching and strengthening and stabilizing and heating and icing and all that stuff. So um, I hope this is a little bit helpful in kind of understanding how I would approach someone with uh, local, relatively straightforward neck pain.